am I the astronaut for not inviting my best friend to come with me to events? And again, this is a follower submission. My friend Rachel and I, both 32 female, have been best friends since we were in high school. We have stayed extremely close and we were roommates in college. Even with conflicting schedules, we try to find times to hang out and catch up. And we occasionally have double dates with our boyfriends. A month ago, an actor we love posted on Instagram that they were coming to our town, so immediately bought the ticket to reserve my spot. When the event happened, I posted the picture on Instagram of me with the actor, and Rachel immediately commented on the photo asking why I didn't tell her. I was a little hurt that she decided to do that publicly on social media instead of texting or calling me, but I wasn't sure if she was joking. After all, she also follows that actor on Instagram too, so maybe she was joking that she missed out. I replied back that I was so excited when I saw their post that I didn't think to tell anyone because I was focused on reserving my spot with an LOL at the end of the comment. She didn't respond, so then I thought maybe it wasn't joking after all. This past weekend, my parents were supposed to come visit, and one of our plans was to go see a show that was on tour in my area. However, they called the week before to let me know that they couldn't come due to a medical reason. We were all disappointed, but they told us to find someone else to use the tickets to the show. The tickets were non-refundable, so they didn't care about getting their money back. They just didn't want the tickets to go to waste. As my boyfriend and I thought of who to invite, I immediately thought of my friend Gabe and his girlfriend Sarah. We had been trying to plan a double date for months, and my boyfriend and I were even planning on locking down a date and time with them that week once we looked at our calendars. Gabe and Sarah are also struggling financially, so we thought having these extra tickets was the perfect opportunity. I texted Gabe, and they immediately accepted gratefully. That show came and went, and the four of us had a great time. Gabe posted a picture of the four of us at the show on Instagram, and he thanked us in the caption for offering them the tickets. I didn't notice this until Rachel messaged me, asking why I didn't ask her to come to the show when I had the tickets. Gabe is a mutual friend, so she follows him on IG too. I tried to explain the situation of the struggle to do a double date with him and this opportunity coming up, but she said it was strange that once again I didn't think of her when something like this came up. She said it seemed like I didn't want to have to share these experiences with her, and my reasons for excluding her were a little too convenient. For context, Rachel battles with anxiety and self-esteem issues where she's worried that people don't like her and that eventually her close friends and even her boyfriend will get sick of her. This has gotten worse as adults when it gets harder for people to get together with job and family obligations, but her own insecurities make her fear it's more personal than just a struggle all adults face. Knowing this, I tried to stay calm and explain that just because she wasn't the first person that comes to my mind when these things happen didn't mean I was intentionally avoiding her. The conversation stopped after that, but I had a feeling it didn't resolve. Today, I got a text from her boyfriend who said Rachel texted him panicking that her best friend of almost 20 years was finally trying to break ties with her. I explained the situation, and while he seemed to be understanding, he said I could have been more sensitive. I argued that I don't need to check in with her every time I go to an event or hang out with friends, just like she doesn't have to do with me. But he said I could at least take a second to send her posts of these events so she could have a chance to go on her own. I reminded him there are plenty of times these cool things happen where I do send them to her or we even go together. But he said it has been less lately and it has worried her. I can't be too mad that he is trying to be a good boyfriend and support her, but I think he was still being unfair. I really don't think I was in the wrong for not always thinking of her. My boyfriend agrees with me, saying these events were public and she could find them herself if she wanted to. As he was concerned, she was deflecting blame on me because she's feeling FOMO. A couple mutual friends I spoke to also agree with me. However, her boyfriend's conversation sticks in my head since there are very few people she would confide in other than me. So, am I the Askonaut? And the original question is, am I the Askonaut for not inviting my best friend to come with me to events? Uh, okay, so it seems genuine on OP's part here that that it legitimately just didn't work out. Now, I think when you have a friend like this, and, and there's an idle hands element to this too, right? People who have a habit of looking for problems will always find them. But this is this is an internal thing, and the friend has to at some point address this and start start addressing how how she feels herself looking for problems and thinking that people are trying to do this. And and OP knows, she knows what the issue here. She knows she she struggles with social anxiety and depression. She knows that she struggles with this self-esteem issues, not depression. Uh, but I mean you can't put that weight on someone else you can't you just can't it's not fair to op here to have that that weight of this whole situation put on her and i think that it just makes it difficult untethered soul is a is a book that uh that candy thunder actually used to address a similar issue here and and it it teaches you to recognize these thoughts that are happening and teaches you to take control of them and at some point here op's friend is gonna have to do that 
it's going to come to that. Now, I think OP has a decision to make here, and that is, do you want this to be your bestie for life? How much do you value this relationship? And if you value this relationship enough to try to help her through this journey, then do that go through that you know that that what she's feeling and what she's saying here is because of her struggles so you can you can use this as an opportunity to be like hey i I didn't mean this in that way at all i know i know why you thought that and i understand that and i want to i want to help you try to battle this and overcome this of course she could get pissed at you saying that too so i don't feel like OP did anything wrong here. Now, the second instance with the tickets, I feel like the first instance with uh, with the the first problem on Instagram with her saying what she said should have planted a seed where she thought of this later on when the second instance came up and then should have addressed it. That's the one area here where I feel like it uh, it could have been done better. Uh, okay, so this story, the follower submission, I really don't feel like OP did anything wrong. I feel like they're in the second scenario with the tickets. Uh, there was a little more weight put on it, and she probably should have recognized um, that this situation was going to happen again with the same friend because it was the same scene, pretty much. It was the same scenario. And yeah, she's going to find out about it because somebody's going to post about it. So if anything, if anything, it is a could have done it differently and ask on for Look at that. Our lights even change for the ass con levels. It's fancy. It's fancy. It's a four to me. I don't think she was an asshole for it, but it is a could have been done differently. Could have been done differently.